Hi there, and welcome to the screencast where we're going to do, as you can see from my big blue banner up on top here, some product rule examples. These are just going to be very basic examples here to give you the general gist. There are more complicated examples coming up in the next few videos. So let's start by differentiating this function f of x equals x squared plus 1 times radical x minus 1. This is going to be a product rule situation, or it can be a product rule situation, because I can see that my f is defined as two functions multiplied by each other. Now, we don't necessarily have to use the product rule on this, and we'll come back to that in a minute, but let's use the product rule just to get it under our fingers. So in the language of the product rule, we have two functions that are multiplied together. We'll just call them the first one and the second one. And the product rule itself tells us that the derivative of the function is the derivative of the first function, which I'll denote using my d over dx notation, the derivative of x squared plus 1 times the second function, kind of just left alone, plus the first function times the derivative of the second function, which I'll again denote using my d over dx notation, so radical x minus 1. So what the product rule really does here is it doesn't so much take a derivative as it splits an existing complicated derivative up into little pieces that are easier to do. Let's just do these derivatives, these uh, miniature derivatives, with this one and this one here very quickly because they are quite simple. The uh, derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x, and this was already being multiplied by a radical x minus 1, and plus from here, and then I had x squared plus 1 and the derivative of radical x minus 1. Just keep in mind that radical x is the same thing as x to the 1 half power. And then I can use my rules for power functions, and that would give me 1 half x to the minus 1 half, and the uh, minus 1 there would differentiate to 0. I'm actually not going to simplify that algebra because I don't want to complicate the issue here. You should definitely attempt to simplify the algebra and check your work using Wolfram Alpha, but I just want to point out what the, uh, the derivative of taking process is over with at this point, and we are left with this. Although I'm not going to simplify the algebra, I will point out that we can actually get around the product rule entirely uh, by doing a little algebraic simplification on the front end of this. If you look at the original f of x definition here, I could just foil these two terms together and get something like x squared times radical x, that's x to the 5 halves, uh, minus x squared plus radical x minus 1. That's equal to the function I'm trying to differentiate, and it's actually a little easier to differentiate it this way uh, if you do a little algebraic simplifying on the front end. So this derivative could be taken two different ways, once by one by using the product rule at the outset and then simplifying at the end, or by using algebraic simplification at the front end and then using some power rule, uh, power function rules uh, as we go. Your choice should end up with the same derivative either way. Now let's move on to another derivative where we're looking at the derivative of g of t equals t cubed minus t plus 1 times e to the t. There's not really much algebra we can do to simplify here, so we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into the product rule. The product rule, again, would say that g prime of t is, just to write it out, it would be the derivative with respect to t, that's the name of my variable now, t, not x, Derivative with respect to t of the first function, t cubed minus t plus 1 times e to the t plus, now here's the second wave of the product rule, it would be the first function, t cubed minus t plus 1 times the derivative with respect to t of the second function. Okay, so now we just have to take the derivatives that are in the two brackets here, but those are really simple. Okay, the first derivative is a polynomial, so this is going to give me 3t cubed squared, sorry, 3t squared minus 1 plus 0 times e to the t plus, and I have t cubed minus t, that's a cube there, minus t plus 1, and the derivative with respect to t of e to the t is e to the t itself. Now all the derivative taking is done. Let's try to simplify the result a little bit. I see that there is a common factor of e to the t on both of these terms, so I will factor that e to the t completely out, and I'm left with 3t squared minus 1 plus all this other stuff, t cubed minus t plus 1. And there's just a tiny bit of simplifying that I can do here. Uh, namely, I can add the 1 and the minus 1 together. So my final derivative that is fully simplified algebraically is e to the t is, or times t cubed plus 3t squared minus t. Again, the minus 1 and the plus 1 add, subtract off from each other. 
Finally, let's look at this one last example where we're going to take the derivative of h of x equals x times radical x. This is an example of where you should not use the product rule. Now I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this function. You're trained to think now that anytime I see two things multiplied together and I need to take their derivative, I'm going to use the product rule. Like here's a thing and here's another thing multiplied together, but not so. We don't use the product rule on every single situation where I have one thing times another. Uh, this is much more simply done by doing a very quick algebraic uh, simplification step at the beginning namely getting this into one power of x. Uh, h of x is x times radical x. It's the same thing as x to the first power times x to the one half power. So I'm just going to simplify this by writing h of x equal to x to the three halves power. So actually h of x is actually not, strictly speaking, two functions multiplied together despite all appearances. It's really just one single power of x. And so that makes the derivative a one-liner. h prime of x is now just going to be 3 halves times x to the 1 half, and that's that. So this is a place where the product rule should definitely not be used. I mean, you could. You could go through and write out the product rule in all of its glory and apply it correctly, and you're going to simplify everything down, and it'll come out to be uh, x 3 halves times x to the 1 half, and you'll feel a little bit silly for having done that. So it's much easier, if you can, to simplify your function at the very beginning and then take it easy on the derivatives than to just pull out the most complicated derivative formula possible and apply it. So that's two examples of the product rule and one example where you should avoid the temptation to use the product rule. Thanks for watching.